The B-2 Spirit isn't just a bomber, it's a ghost in the sky. Built in total secrecy, designed to be invisible, and flown by computer more than pilot, the B-2 changed everything we thought we knew about modern warfare. But how do you actually make a plane that defies radar, heat sensors, and even sound? From Cold War urgency to groundbreaking engineering, this is the full story behind the billion-dollar stealth bomber the world wasn't supposed to see. Step inside the classified world of hangars, hidden engines, and physics-bending designs to uncover how the B-2 was really made. Cold War sparks the stealth revolution. In the tense atmosphere of the mid-1970s, the balance of global military power was shifting. American B-52 bombers, the Cold War's airborne giants, had once ruled the skies. But technology doesn't stand still. By 1975, the Soviet Union's missile systems had become dangerously accurate. B-52s, once untouchable, now looked like glowing red targets flying straight into a hornet's nest. That posed a serious problem. The entire concept of nuclear deterrence relied on something called second strike capability, the ability to respond with overwhelming force after a surprise nuclear attack. But if America's bombers could be picked off before they reached their targets, the entire nuclear strategy crumbled. The Pentagon knew it needed something radically different, not just faster or bigger, something invisible. A bomber that could sneak through the most advanced air defenses in the world without being seen. That vision gave birth to the Advanced Technology Bomber, ATB, program. Launched quietly in the late 1970s, the ATB wasn't about brute strength. It was about stealth, low radar signature, minimal heat trail, and the ability to operate in enemy airspace like a ghost. Behind closed doors, a new kind of aircraft was taking shape. One that wouldn't just fly over the battlefield, but rewrite the rules of air warfare entirely. The Forgotten Flying Wing Long before the Cold War made stealth a necessity, one man had already imagined it. Jack Northrop, an aviation pioneer, had sketched out something radical in the 1940s, the Flying Wing. His creation, the YB-49, looked like nothing else in the sky. No tail, no fuselage, just one massive wing gliding through the air. At the time, it was revolutionary, and maybe too far ahead of its time. The design offered huge aerodynamic benefits, less drag, more lift, and better fuel efficiency. But it came with a major drawback, stability. Without a tail, the YB-49 was difficult to control, especially during turns or turbulence. And back then, flight computers didn't exist to compensate. Despite its promise, the project was scrapped in 1949. All prototypes were ordered destroyed. The flying wing was shelved, dismissed as too risky, too experimental. But the idea never really died. Decades later, when engineers started thinking about how to make a bomber disappear from radar, Northrop's old designs re-emerged. The smooth, seamless wing, mining, once seen as unstable, now looked like the perfect shape to scatter radar signals. What had once been abandoned for being too radical was about to become the foundation for the most advanced bomber ever built the secret contract that changed everything. By 1978, the U.S. Air Force had narrowed its search for the next generation bomber to two contenders, Lockheed, already famous for the F-117 stealth fighter, and Northrop, the original champion of the flying wing. Both companies had radically different approaches, but one goal, make radar see nothing. The competition was tight and completely under wraps. Billions were quietly funneled into black budgets, Scientists and engineers worked behind closed doors, with no press, no photos, and no outside chatter. In 1981, Northrop's flying wing design won. At first, the mission focused on high-altitude bombing, dropping payloads from miles above the Earth. But as Soviet radar systems improved, the plan evolved. The B-2 would fly low and quiet, slipping beneath enemy detection grids, hugging the terrain. Everything about the project was secret, the public didn't even know what the bomber looked like until years later. Even the name was hidden. Internally, it was called Senior Ice. And as development costs soared, the secrecy only deepened. By the early 1980s, the B-2 program had quietly become the most classified aircraft project in U.S. history. A stealth revolution was underway, but almost no one knew it. Born in the Shadows building, the B-2 was nothing like building a traditional airplane. It started at a place called Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, 
a site already known for secret military aircraft. But for this project, even greater precautions were taken. Ordinary hangars were converted into secure facilities. Some buildings didn't even have windows. Security protocols were intense. Engineers and assembly workers were kept in isolated cells. Most didn't even know what the full plane looked like. Only a handful of people ever saw the complete blueprints. Workers underwent background checks, polygraph tests, and constant monitoring. It was a level of secrecy more like a spy operation than an aerospace project. And the plane itself? It came together piece by piece. Subassemblies were built in different locations, each part hidden from the next. When the first full prototype was finally rolled out in 1988, the Air Force only allowed photos from the front. The rear, where the exhaust and engine design were, remained a closely guarded secret. Even its code name, Senior Ice, gave away nothing. For years, even its existence was denied. But in those darkened hangars, piece by piece, the most advanced bomber the world had ever seen was taking shape. Shaped by physics, the stealth wing. The B-2's shape isn't just about looking futuristic, it's about survival. Every curve, every angle is sculpted by physics to defeat radar. Traditional aircraft have tails, cockpits, and sharp edges that reflect radar waves back to the source. The B-2 has none of that. Instead, it takes on the appearance of a boomerang, smooth, wide, and low. This flying wing form is almost entirely flat from the front with no vertical surfaces. When radar waves hit it, they scatter in all directions instead of bouncing straight back. The enemy radar sees nothing. This is more than just clever shaping. The B-2's surface is designed using early computational fluid dynamics, digital wind tunnels that allowed engineers to tweak every detail. The blended wing body shape eliminates the hard lines where radar could latch on. Even the color matters. That charcoal gray paint helps it blend into the sky at high altitude, especially during night missions. Form follows function, and in the B-2's case, function demands invisibility. From above or below, from near or far, the B-2 doesn't just evade detection, it defies it. It's not just a bomber, it's a stealth machine shaped by science, built to vanish. Invisible skin, radar absorbent magic. Looking stealthy isn't enough. To truly disappear from radar, the B-2 needed a skin that could absorb radar waves instead of reflecting them. That's where radar absorbent material, known as RAM, came in. And it wasn't just a coating. It was an engineered surface made of special polymers and ferrite particles, each layer tuned to trap radar energy like a sponge. RAM is applied across the entire body of the aircraft in overlapping layers. Every panel, every screw, every seam must align with surgical precision. A single misaligned edge or exposed rivet could reflect radar and compromise the aircraft's invisibility. So workers applied the coating with an almost obsessive attention to detail, often by hand, using tools more suited for a watchmaker than an aircraft technician. This stealth skin is sensitive. Over time, it wears down from weather, flight, or even the pressure of maintenance. That's why after every mission, the B-2 goes into a specially climate-controlled hangar, kept at precise humidity and temperature to prevent degradation of the RAM. Technicians then inspect and reapply the coating as needed, often by brush. It's this invisible armor, more than the engines or avionics, that lets the B-2 slip past the world's most advanced air defenses. But it comes at a cost. Maintaining the stealth skin is labor-intensive and slow. Still, for an aircraft designed to be seen only once and never again, it's a small price to pay. And behind that delicate coating where you find something just as crucial, the brain and balance that make flying this shape even possible. Taming the flying wing. Flying a B-2 is unlike flying any conventional plane. With no tail or vertical stabilizers, the aircraft lacks the natural stability pilots depend on. It should, by all rights, be unflyable. But in the B-2, that challenge is solved by pure computing power. The secret is a system called fly-by-wire, where computers constantly adjust the flight surfaces to keep the plane balanced. Hundreds of tiny corrections per second are made automatically, faster than any human could react. Without this, even the slightest turbulence would send the aircraft tumbling. Because of this, the B-2 can do things no other bomber can. It can fly low and slow, hugging terrain with precision. It can turn on a dime despite its massive wingspan 
and it stays incredibly smooth, giving the crew a calm ride even when pushing the limits of physics. Pilots describe flying it like riding a unicycle on a tightrope in the dark. Without the computers, the wing design would fail, but with them, it becomes graceful, agile, and deadly quiet. From computers that keep it balanced, we move next to engines that keep it hidden, not just in the air, but from the enemy's sensors as well. Hidden engines, hidden heat. The B-2 doesn't just hide from radar, it also hides from heat-seeking systems. That starts with its engines. Instead of hanging under the wing like most jets, the B-2's four General Electric F-1 and 18 engines are buried deep within the wing structure itself. This placement serves two purposes. First, it keeps the engine intakes and fan blades, major radar reflectors, out of view from ground-based radar. Second, it muffles and cools the hot exhaust, which would normally leave a trail visible to infrared sensors and satellites. Even the shape of the air intake matters. They're mounted on top of the wings and curved in such a way that radar can't peek in. Inside, the fans are hidden behind serrated edges that scatter any incoming waves. The exhaust is then spread out and mixed with cool air before it ever leaves the aircraft, drastically lowering its infrared signature. All of this contributes to one thing, silence, both thermal and acoustic. The B-2 is often described as gliding rather than flying. It moves through the air with a whisper, a ghost on the radar, and a shadow in the sky. This stealthy structure, however, is only possible thanks to what lies beneath its skin, a construction philosophy that's more watchmaker than war machine. Built like a watch, not a tank. Unlike traditional bombers that are built tough to take hits, the B-2 is built for precision. The frame is made of carbon graphite composites, materials that are both strong and transparent to radar. It's not about brute strength, it's about fine-tuned, balanced engineering. The aircraft is assembled in modules, nose section, wings, and center fuselage. Each is built separately and later joined with incredible precision. Tiny misalignments, even fractions of an inch, can create radar hotspots. So the tolerances on the B-2's construction are tighter than any bomber before it. Joints are smoothed, seams are filled, and surfaces are polished not for looks, but to preserve stealth. Internally, the structure is reinforced but remains lightweight. Everything is measured, balanced, and adjusted to maintain the integrity of the flying wing. This philosophy extends even to its moving parts. Control surfaces blend seamlessly with the airframe. Maintenance crews use laser alignment tools just to open certain access panels. Nothing is left to chance. This level of detail enables the aircraft's shape and systems to work in perfect harmony. But shaping the airframe is only part of the equation. To control it all, you need a brain. And that's where the B-2's avionics take over. Avionics, the brain of the beast. Hidden inside the B-2's sleek frame is a network of computers and sensors that make it one of the most intelligent aircraft ever flown. Early versions had over 130 onboard computers managing every aspect of the mission, from flight stabilization to target acquisition. Its radar systems aren't just for navigation. They're designed to scan, track, and avoid threats without ever revealing the bomber's position. GPS and terrain following systems allow the B-2 to fly low under radar coverage in complete darkness, bad weather, or both. And if GPS fails, it can even navigate by the stars using onboard celestial navigation systems. Electronic warfare suites monitor enemy radar signals and can jam or spoof them on the fly. The aircraft can slip past missile systems and jam their signals before they even know it's there. All of this computing power is housed in modular avionics bays, allowing for regular upgrades. Over time, analog systems have been replaced with fiber optics and flight computers have been digitized to improve speed and reliability. The B-2 doesn't just carry bombs, it carries a brain, and that brain makes sure it survives, completes its mission, and returns unseen, which leads us to its most important task, delivering the payload. Payload of precision and power. At its core, the B-2 isn't just a stealth machine, it's a strategic weapon. Everything about its design serves one final function, delivering a payload with pinpoint accuracy while remaining undetected. And when it comes to payloads, the B-2 has no shortage of options. Hidden within its internal bomb bays, the B-2 can carry up to 20 tons of ordnance, 
Unlike older bombers that relied on sheer volume, the B-2 relies on versatility and precision. It can carry conventional bombs for tactical strikes or nuclear weapons for strategic deterrence, all while maintaining its stealth profile. Its most notable capability, the ability to hit up to 80 individual targets in a single mission. Thanks to satellite-guided JDAM, munitions, each bomb can be programmed to strike a different location with incredible accuracy. In modern warfare, that kind of flexibility is priceless. But the B-2's punch doesn't stop at standard bombs. It can also carry the GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, a 30,000-pound bunker buster capable of tearing through hardened underground facilities. It's designed for deep strikes against buried command centers or weapon silos. If it needs to, the B-2 can reach the enemy where they feel safest. And the plane does all of this while staying cloaked. It flies through contested airspace, evades radar, and delivers its payload before the enemy knows what hit them. Whether it's flying solo into a well-defended target or part of a larger strike package, the B-2 serves as the scalpel in the U.S. military's toolkit. Precise, silent, and devastating. But that level of performance comes with a staggering price tag. And that's where the B-2's most controversial chapter begins. The Billion Dollar Price Tag the B-2 Spirit might be one of the most advanced aircraft ever built, but it's also one of the most expensive. When you add up research and development, oh my, infrastructure and maintenance, the cost per unit climbs to a staggering $2 billion. It's not just a bomber, it's a flying investment portfolio. Why so expensive? Start with the materials. Carbon composites, specialized RAM coatings, and precision crafted parts aren't mass produced then factor in the secrecy. Every stage of development was hidden from public view, which meant duplicated facilities, compartmentalized teams, and layers of security, all of it costing more than conventional projects. And then there's maintenance. The B-2's stealth skin is notoriously finicky. After every flight, the aircraft undergoes exhaustive inspections. Ram coatings must be reapplied, surfaces polished, and avionics recalibrated. Each hour in the sky demands over 100 hours on the ground. Only 21 were ever built. That limited production run drove up the per unit cost even more. Had the program reached its original goal of 132 bombers, economies of scale might have helped. But political pushback and budget constraints stopped that early. Despite its price, the B-2's effectiveness has never been questioned. But as the military looks toward the future, even this stealth icon must pass the torch legacy of a phantom giant. The B-2 spirit first took to the skies in 1989, a silent specter against the Cold War sky. But it wasn't until 1999 that it proved its worth in combat during Operation Allied Force in Kosovo. Since then, the B-2 has flown missions over Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria, often striking with precision from halfway around the world. Its combat record is more than symbolic. It's surgical. The B-2 has destroyed fortified bunkers, struck high-value targets in the opening hours of conflicts, and demonstrated the value of stealth in modern warfare. It's not just feared because of what it can do, but because no one sees it coming. For over 30 years, the B-2 has been a key piece of America's nuclear and conventional deterrent strategy. But all things evolve. The next generation is already on the horizon. The B-21 Raider, a smaller, more cost-efficient, an even stealthier bomber is being developed to eventually replace the bow fleet. Still, the spirit leaves behind a powerful legacy. It proved that the flying wing wasn't a failed dream, but the future of strategic air power. It showed the world that invisibility wasn't science fiction, it was operational. And above all, it rewrote the rulebook of aerial warfare, quiet, unseen, unmatched. The B-2 spirit redefined air power Proving stealth wasn't just possible, it was unstoppable. As we enter the age of the B-21, its legacy still casts a long shadow. If this deep dive into aviation's most secret marvel intrigued you, hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more untold tech stories.